Hi, my name is Dania. Hi, my name is Navea. Hi, my name is Ainsley. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the Dope, Dope Student Podcast. Podcast. So who are we here with today? Uh, my name is Liam, Liam Power. So today we're going to be asking you some questions. Um, first question is, can you share a bit about your background? What led your current role as a director of ed- education and how did your journey form a troubled, wait, from a troubled teen to this position shape you? Sure. Uh, no, I appreciate the question. So uh, I grew up with, uh, I think, a plan in my head of what I wanted to do with my life. And, and um, you know, I tried to do a lot of the right things. But growing up, I moved a lot. Uh, I, I moved because my dad was in a, a job that required us to go all over the, the world sometimes. And uh, unfortunately, when when you're somebody and then you go somewhere else and you're somebody who's different, um, you know, there's there's that feeling of otherness, right? And so that's something I think a lot of people can relate to, um, you know, folks, all, all, all types of folks. But, um, you know, ultimately, uh, I came back to the United States. I wanted to go to college to be a pilot of all things. Uh, and then September 11th, on, you know, 2001 happened. And uh, from that point on, I uh, decided to do something different, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. My whole life was spent with that idea. And... Um, by accident, I sort of stumbled into this uh, this program, this this criminal justice program. Uh, I started working with kids in Westchester uh, after school, uh, kids that needed support in the community with homework and you know with um, just positive role model that kind of thing. And I liked it, and I was like, all right, you know, I I can get with this a little bit. This is this feels good. It feels good to get back. And um, so I was on my last my last semester of school and. I went out to uh, to this beautiful campus where the uh, Clock Tower Schools is now, and I, I fell in love because the whole place was about helping kids, about giving kids second chances, it was about uh, you know giving kids opportunities to grow where they might not have had them before. And so, uh, you know, that was a great experience for me. And so from that day, I joined up. Um, I, I've worked there my entire career. Uh, I, I've served uh, youth uh, about your ages or a little bit older, um, all all male population. Uh, but kids that get in trouble. Um, because when I was lost in the sauce, as we call it, growing up, um, that was tough. It was tough to feel lost, right? You, you, you want to reach out and find somebody that can help you out, somebody like Mr. Jared or somebody like some of your peers around here or student leaders that can support you. Um, you know. But that's kind of what led me on the crooked path to getting into the field that I'm in now. But my whole job today is, is helping uh, young men that have made mistakes uh, learn from those mistakes and get back on track. Um, and I try to tap into some of my, li- my own life experiences to help that. So, Okay, you mentioned that you were originally a path, on a path to becoming a professional pilot. What changed and how did you realize your pat- passion, passion for helping young men find their way? Sure, I appreciate that. So, um, yeah, a- after 9-11, you know, when you go to a flight school and um, you-, you have this idea and all of a sudden it just dematerializes in front of your face. And I think that for me is the way of relating to a lot of kids. I, I, I've had a lot of opportunities in my life. I'm not going to pretend like I've had a lot of adversity growing up. I haven't. I'll, I'll be honest about that. Um, but if I'm also being honest, in watching people who have struggled through adversity, seeing the strength that they've brought, I know in myself that I'm not confident that I would have brought that same strength to the table. So what I say in that is when I see kids that need help, I recognize that I might not have been as strong as some of these kids have already been up to this point. So if I can give back, if I can make their lives better, if I can support them, um, I'm all about doing that. Your organization is branching into workforce development. Can you show how this initiative helps both troubled teens and returning citizens reintegrate into society? Absolutely. Uh, You know, I mentioned I went to college. Um, When I went to college, that was sort of what you did after high school. That's not the case anymore. Um, That's not the case at all. In fact, going to college is certainly a good option um, for life, but there's lots of career options. There's a lot of career opportunities. Not only are there a lot of career opportunities, but there are a lot of extremely high-paying career opportunities that are honestly a whole heck of a lot of fun. Um, you know, I, I don't looking around this the studio and this this workshop. 
you don't get the impression that you come here and have a real boring day, right? You don't get the impression that you come here and you're putting in that nine to five and you go home and like, this is, this might be what a career feels like someday. This boring, same old, same old, right? That's not the case here. You look around here. This is, this is opportunity. This is creativity. You, you look around and, and you get inspired. Like you could build anything you want in this, in this environment. And uh, that's an incredible thing, taking something out of nothing and creating from it. So um, that's also what I like to do in response to your question with kids is help them find what makes them special, what makes them tick. Because a lot of times our kids haven't had that opportunity to find out. A lot of times our kids are struggling too and, and hurting. And so if, if I can help the way Mr. Jarrett does and others and, and give kids opportunities to discover what they're good at or, or what they enjoy, uh, I think I probably did my job. You've mentioned changing the ju the juvenile justice system and addressing youth mental health and workforce development together. What changes do you think are most urgently needed in these areas? So, so y'all, I'm talking middle and high school folks. It's a it's a hard time to be a middle schooler and a high schooler right now. Um, I'm not gonna lie, like yeah. As an adult looking at this, it's you know how did things get so severe in this in the schools, right? How how do we get so um, concerned with not having enough uh, materials in school, not uh, you know school security and school mental health? Um, you know, ultimately, uh, the programs that we're designing have things built in that are going to help uh, improve mental health for people that need it. And so, if you have you know, a, a young person who's coming to our program for workforce development, learning skills and things like that. And uh, along the way, they also need some support or, or maybe they need some money to pay some bills or, or maybe the it's hard getting food uh, right now, but they just need that little bit of support. These are all things that we can do uh, to, to wrap around our students to help make sure they got what they need to be successful. Hey, you've spoken about the importance of 21st century, century career pathways and how the lines between college and CTE, pro CTE programs are blurring. How can, can you explain what that means for students considering different career routes? Absolutely. As I said, you, you don't have to go to college anymore to make a, a great living. Um, I'll give you an example. My, uh, you know, my air conditioner went the other day, um, and I had to call somebody just to have them come out. It was like four hundred dollars. That's not even to look at the the actual thing and figure out what's wrong, get the replacement parts, the labor, and all of that. Right? Um, looking around, what y'all doing? This is amazing. You can do this out of your house. You don't need to own office space to do this. Uh, all of this stuff that you're doing is is creative. It's impactful. Um, it, it's things that you can do as students, but it's also things that you can do as people who have made mistakes as adults have gone to uh, in prison or jail and come back as returning citizens. Uh, these are things they can do as well. And so that's that's really what this program is designed to do uh, at the Clock Tower Apprenticeship Programs. It's designed to help returning citizens. It's designed to help young adults that aren't making enough money. And it's to say, all right, guys, look, we got all this incredible talent here between all these people. We've got all these needs in all these different areas of uh, career and technical vocation or, or engineering or construction or electrical or whatever, medical um, tech. Uh, how do we take the skills, how do we give you the skills, and connect you to the right people so that you can make a job that is enough to cover for you, your family, your kids, everybody, right? And, and that's exactly what this program is designed to do. So we've been fortunate to partner with organizations that also want to help people. Uh, and so these organizations are willing to pay uh, so that folks can come to these programs and go through them for free. So basically... They come to the program for free. They get paid to actually do the program. So you actually get like a, we call it a stipend, but it's kind of like a paycheck. Afterwards, you've got the skills that you can go out and make nearly six figures starting and certainly six figures later. Um, and we connect you directly to the employer too. So it's connections to connections to connections until you're at a place where you have a great family sustaining wage. So that's the goal. What are some of the key milestones and challenges in, in your career as someone who has worked with troubled teens and has been involved in shaping Pennsylvania policy? Okay. So kids first. So building trust is tough. Um, 
you know, as I said, I haven't grown up with a, a tremendous amount of the diversity. I'm not the first person you think of when you think of diversity, right? Um, certainly not. Uh, but my whole life is spent um, supporting young people. The people I work with, the clock tower schools, the, their whole lives are spent uh, supporting young people. Um, they're really devoted to, to giving folks the, the resources and tools they need uh, to be highly successful. Um, so I hope that answered the question. What advice would, would you give to students who are interested in pursuing a career in education or juvenile justice reform? And why is it so important for them to be involved? Sure, um, being authentic and genuine I think is huge. Um, really wanting to do it. You know, in your, in your past question, you asked about um, some of the experiences and challenges and, and working with kids and building trust is challenging as somebody that doesn't necessarily uh, represent um, the typical students that I work with, uh, sometimes that takes longer than others, and that's okay. Um, but for somebody looking to get into the field, somebody that's in the field that's looking for tips, bringing your authentic self, being real, um, following up and doing what you say you're going to do, that's huge. Um, and uh, in terms of uh, you know juvenile justice reform and in trying to improve things for kids, uh, like I said, kids are hurting. When I, when I was in school uh, as a kid, I would bring a butter knife want to cut up like an apple. You do that nowadays, you get expelled, right? You get kicked right out. That to me is wild, but we also deal now with these um, school safety issues that we haven't had in the past, and I get it. So as a juvenile justice reformer, we really want to um, try to create these systems that are safer for kids, that give kids more options, that give kids more pathways, um, to a good paying career. You're passionate about real world experiences with, for students. How do you think those experiences can shape their education and future career choices? So uh, I'm actually still a student myself. And one of the things we actually were just talking about last night is how, uh, is, is the um, experience, how experience is uh, really the thing that, um, that drives knowledge and understanding. You can go to school, you can learn to do something in a book, um, but when you go out to actually frame a roof or put shingles on or run pipe or electric, does that translate into something that your hands and your body know how to do, right? There's a, there's a disconnect there. Knowledge does not equal understanding. And so when you have an opportunity like this to get your hands on uh, with, with, with technology, with, with tools, resources, and things like that, and actually put that to work, that's when you're really gonna learn for sure. And so um, those real world experiences, absolutely critical to success. Uh, unless you're actually running a mixer in the studio, in the cameras, in the four track, and mixing the audio, and cutting the video, and putting it all together, and exporting it, and render one, render two, final, final number two, you know? Because you keep making the mistakes, and you keep re-rendering, re-rendering, and you're on render, 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 right? So it's, um, it's good. It's an, it's an incredible thing to get your hands dirty, to really learn what it is, to build something from the ground up, and to do it like you guys are doing it here. It's, a, it's, a, it's amazing stuff. As someone who has been both an educator and a dad, what are some of the most valuable lessons you've learned from your interactions with students? It's a lot harder to be a dad, <laughs> um, I think. It's... it's it's difficult to do both, but uh, I think y you can be as prepared as you want from years of experience of working with young men, but you you're just never prepared to be a dad um, or a mom for that matter, I would imagine. Um, but I, I believe that, uh, uh, you know what, I'm sorry, my brain shorted out, I'm gonna have to edit that. What was the second part of that question? The second part of the question was, um, what are some of the most valuable lessons you've learned from your interactions with students? Yeah, so I, I would also um, go back to the authenticity because making sure students know you're there for them for the right reasons uh, is huge. You know, Mr. Jarrett knows, for instance, that you guys are here because you want to be. That's an incredible thing. He's cultivated an environment here where kids want to come and be the best the best selves that they can be, um, to dig deep and pull out things that are, that are new and exciting. Um, 
that's that's something that you really can't teach. But when you try to when you when you see it, you, you try to mimic it. You try to tap into it. You try to use that in your own lives as a father, as a mother, as a whomever. Um, and so my tip is to take all the good that you see around you and really try to apply it. Uh, and when it doesn't work, don't give up. Be persistent. Be honest. Be genuine. You've me- you've mentioned taking up the violin after your son did so he could see you struggle alongside him. How important is it for young people to see adults, especially role models, challenge themselves and grow? Yeah, I say this thing to my son. Hard things are hard for grown-ups, too. Um, I think my son sees me sometimes and uh, thinks that this is just how I show up, not seeing the hard work, you know, that it takes to, to do some of these things. And um, that, that can lead to frustration. People want things now. Um, people are impatient. And so a couple of years ago, I mentioned I'm a student. I, I applied to go to school, and I didn't get in. I got rejected uh, from everywhere, all three. Um, and so I saved them, all those rejection letters, and I talked to my kids about it. And I said, you know, how do, how do you think this makes me feel? And do you think this makes me feel dumb? Or, you know, do you think this, whatever. Um, and then the next year, I actually did get in, which was great. But I had the same conversation with my kids. And I say this to say that there's a lot of times in life uh, where, where the failures are going to stack up. And chances are, if you're not failing that fast, you're not trying all that hard. Um, you know, the failures are the stepping stones to getting where you need to go. Absolutely. So there's this thing in CTE called rapid prototyping. Um, it's this philosophy where we're trying to build something. We're going to get it wrong as quickly as possible and keep making new iterations as we go. That way we'll get there faster. Um, it's sort of like that as well. <laughs> there you go. Right. Exactly with that book. Um, and so, yeah, you know, this I, I, I like that um, that idea of rapid prototyping and applying that in general to life. Okay, is there anything you'd like to leave with our listeners, whether it's advice for students, insights about your work, or reflections on the importance of workforce developments and development in today's world? If you have an interest, uh, go after it, even if it's something that doesn't last forever, um, because as you do it, you're going to be exposed to other things. Uh, you may come here for the videography and end up doing post-editing. You may find that's your passion, right? Um, I guess what I'm saying is th- there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunity in participation and uh, just being part of the process uh, is that critical first step that everybody's got to take. Once you take that first step, you just got to keep moving. It's, it's breaking that initial friction that that is difficult. And so, um, you, you know, my advice would be uh, if you have an opportunity to um, connect with an adult in a field that you're interested in, do it. If you have an adult that inspires you in your academic environment, connect with them. If you have uh, you know, even s- older sibling peers or, or friends of, o- older adult friends that are in certain areas that, ha- that you have interest in, um, try to get involved, uh, even if it's just a little bit, even if it's just asking questions, or, or maybe it's actually coming and doing something for real like this, something tangible. Um, but get involved. Don't, don't, I guess, get distracted by things that are out there that take your eyes off the prize. And one thing I tell the, the kids I work with, keep your motivators in mind. Keep your motivators in mind. When, when you start, when you have options to make decisions, good or bad decisions, Keep your motivators in mind. Where am I trying to be? Lastly, thank you for answering all our questions. And thank you guys for watching another episode of the Dope Student Podcast. Bye. Bye.